Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, we have all heard the term regenerative medicine. What does that mean? Exactly. What does it really mean? (laughs) Well, I think it's the field of medicine that tries to replace or to regenerate human cells, human tissues, or even organs to get them back to normal. Now, it also includes the possibility of actually growing tissues and organs in the lab and implanting them in the body that can't heal itself. That's amazing. Yeah, it is incredible stuff. In short, it's a way to actually repair or replace diseased, uh, diseased or injured tissues and organs. And here to tell us more is the Director of Regenerative Medicine at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Andre Terzik. Welcome back to the program. It's been a while. Thank you for having me. Dr. Terzik, and it's, it's an honor to have you on the program. So what has regenerative medicine allowed you to do that you never thought possible? It's an exciting time. I think we see successes around all fields of medicine, essentially. I think the breakthrough of the year, for example, is in cancer. We're able to treat many of the blood cancers in ways we never could imagine before. It's a different medicine than what we used to to train in school. We're using a technology called regenerative immunotherapy, also known as CAR T cells, which is able to target cancer cells and very specifically get rid of them. So instead of, for example, chemotherapy, where it's toxic to all tissues, including the cancer, these are just targeted at the cancer and leave the rest of the body alone? You can almost speak of smart cells in many ways. So you're using your own body to essentially get rid of, uh, of cancer cells. And the successes are, are throughout. Uh, another breakthrough of the year is clearly neurosurgery. We saw earlier this year the first case here at the Mayo Clinic where a patient that was quadriplegic was able to be treated successfully with uh, stem cell intervention. Of course, much more research needs to be done. Many more evidences needs to be put, uh, put forward, but it is very encouraging to see these early, early successes. Now, you said stem cell intervention. Tell, tell us exactly what you did to help restore this uh, quadriplegic. And quadriplegic means that the injury to the spinal cord was high enough that none of the limbs work. The stem cells are those magic seeds, in a way, that uh, originally we thought that if we implant them, let's say, into an injured tissue, they will regrow and unable to enable, essentially, the tissue to repair we are increasingly seeing that it's not simply a brick and mortar interaction. They are, they are truly engaging the healing processes from within. So you actually heal, the cells help you heal by yourself. The, the way the skin, when we cut it, will, will heal on its own. Here, very complex organ tissues like the, the spinal cord has some attempts to, to heal And um, in essence, we are using these technologies to promote, essentially, this this healing. We still do not know what gets to ultimately uh, ensure the repair, but clearly it's promising. Is it it nerves that are being repaired or muscles? What, What exactly is happening? In this particular case, the tissue that allows the nerve conduction. In other cases, as you mentioned, could be the end organ, the muscle, for example. But think of stem cells as only one technology. You know, we used to put uh, an equal sign between regenerative medicine and stem cell medicine. But increasingly, there are many more technologies that are being developed. You may not even need those seeds. You may be able to extract what really works within them, the active ingredient, and uh, use it as a, as a way to, to, to repair. So we speak of acellular regeneration, regeneration without stem cells. Hmm. So isn't it interesting that most tissues in our body have the ability to repair themselves, but the spinal cord does not? So what you did was you took some stem cells, injected them adjacent to the severed spinal cord, and helped it repair itself? The concept that some organs cannot repair is increasingly being challenged. Hmm. We, even uh, the spinal cord? Even the spinal cord. We went to school, medical school, they told us the spinal cord cannot repair. Mm-hmm. We, they told us you will die with the heart you were born with. In other words, the heart cannot repair. But increasingly we're understanding there is an innate ability of self-renewal. 
So each of our tissues, maybe at a very, in a very subtle way, can somewhat repair itself. And the goal of regenerative medicine is to boost that ability of self-repair. So we all want to be like the liver because the liver can regenerate. Can you learn some lessons from the liver? Indeed, from the liver, <laughs> from the skin, from organs that typically are much uh, more readily renewable than others will be a guide how to, to proceed. What are other muscular uses? I mean, it, in my head, I'm thinking aging. I mean, so is, how is this going to affect how we age? The goal with aging is not necessarily to extend lifespan. I think the goal and where regenerative medicine comes uh, central is to extend health span to match lifespan. And so we see it in many chronic diseases. And we see essentially regenerative medicine as a way not to fight disease. You know, we used to say we fight cancer, we fight cardiovascular disease, we fight diabetes many of the diseases that come with, with aging. Here, regenerative medicine is enabling us to speak more of rebuilding health. That's the essence, really, of, of the regenerative process. And when we say rebuilding health, is not just restoring form and function of a specific organ or tissue, but ideally, ultimately, rebuilding the human being in its, in its totality, so a holistic almost process mm. of regenerative medicine. Now, I know you've been working for a long time on repairing heart muscle. Can you give us an update there? Because once someone has a heart attack and part of the muscle dies, the, the heart, we've always been told, can't regenerate. What's dead is dead, but may not be true. Yeah, we have had indeed a remarkable experience with uh, heart regeneration and in particular in a condition called heart failure. So this will be a condition after a heart attack where part of the muscle, as you mentioned, dies out. And what do we do for that part of the muscle? So really what we are doing, we are leveraging the self-repair capacity of the heart by introducing other stem cells, or now more increasingly these acellular approaches, the, the, activating, the juice of the stem cells, and achieving a repair that is indeed uh, very significant in many cases. But again, more research will be needed to fully establish these technologies going forward. So it may be that you're not going to die with the heart you were born with. Indeed. And what about uh, or the need for organ transplant? Are we going to get to a spot where we can grow the organ that we need? That's a huge field of interest and unmet need. And uh, tissue engineering being one component of the regenerative toolkit is indeed able to, to make us dream and now no more dream anymore. Actually, there are very concrete examples of new organs that are built in this way. An effort here at the Mayo Clinic uh, is to build a new um, voice box, a new larynx. And uh, at the national level, this effort has been recognized and Mayo Clinic has been given the green light actually to launch the first uh, larynx transplant through regenerative technology in this space. So now that's amazing. So would this be someone who had injured their larynx or someone who had cancer of the larynx and had to be removed? Indeed, that will be a case, let's say, of an individual with a cancer of the larynx. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the voice is lost at that time. And uh, through this regenerative intervention, you are, can be fortunate to may need to remove maybe just half of the larynx and replace it with, uh, with a new half. One that you grew in the lab? That you grew in the lab and that you take advantage also of the body parts of the individual. And ultimately, uh, voice can be regained. So restoring not just form, but ultimately function is very critical. I have to ask, because I just read this uh, on the news network, that um, stem cells can help with hair loss. Are we, are we talking about all the way down to hair loss? <laughs> So there is a lot of interest in that field. Of course there, there is, is a lot, lot of, of people interest. dealing with hair loss. And again, it, it showcases successes across Mayo efforts that are happening uh, throughout uh, in Mayo Clinic here, but also Mayo Clinic in Florida and Arizona, a lot of efforts in many fields. Hair loss is, uh, is an area that our campus in Florida has in particularly uh, driven with uh, initial, indeed, uh, successful uh, experiences, so more to come.
someday may not need a hair transplant. Wow. You can just make those cells keep growing hair that you got on your scalp. <laughs> Kidney Maybe. transplant, hair transplant, it'll all work out. <laughs> Regenerative medicine, the process of replacing or regenerating human cells, tissues, or organs to restore function. Regenerative medicine is also working on being able to grow tissues and organs in the lab and implanting them into someone who can't heal on their own. Exciting stuff. Our thanks to the director of the Mayo Clinic Center for Regenerative Medicine, Dr. Andre Terzik. Thanks again. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Dr. Terzik.